rotor, the rotor has a higher mass, giving you a higher inertia. You need to incorporate in your software ramp up and ramp down to avoid missteps due to rotor inertia. It, it's actually interesting to note that sometimes a larger motor will give you worse performance than a smaller motor. That's not always true and you really need to do the calculations to determine how these things are going to impact your system. However, suffice it to say that you do need to consider rotor inertia when you're selecting a motor. Okay, we talked a little bit before about power supply um, voltage and we said that you want to use a higher voltage if possible. Um, power supplies are actually an area that give a lot of newcomers problems. And really the reason for that is quite simple. The nameplate of a motor will give you the current rating of the motor on a per phase basis. And most newcomers don't consider that there's two phases in that motor. Okay. For example, if you look at one of the Stepper 3 Econostep motors, the uh, S34-450S uh, motor, it's rated at 2 amps per phase, which means since you have two, amp, or two phases in that motor, it requires a total of 4 amps from the power supply to run it. Now, that's not entirely true in that if you're running a microstepping driver, the microstepping driver actually you can consider 0 0.707 times that 4 amps as the maximum current required. Why is that? Because a microstepping driver actually simulates a sine wave and the effective power of a sine wave is 0 0.707 times the peak power. So when I set up my microstepping driver for 2 amps per phase, it will actually require 4 amps times 0 0.707. Now, that's for one motor. If you have a three-axis system and all are running at the same current, each meaning each motor is the same motor, you would have to take 12 amps and multiply it by 0 0.707. So you can see that the power supply can get large very quickly. Um, so this is an area where a lot of newcomers make mistakes and they pick a, a power supply that's too small for their application and then the system just won't perform well. Now, unregulated power supplies generally perform better in CNC applications than regulated power supplies. In fact, switching power supplies um, oftentimes won't even start in a CNC application and that's because the load when the power supply is very high and most switching power supplies can't start at a high load. Power supplies often result in less than expected performance since application engineers rarely consider the overall current requirements. Okay, wanted good mechanical engineering. Perhaps the most common mistake of a newcomer is to guess at the size of the stepper motor they may need. Now, it can work. In fact, there are rules of thumb that we use at Stepper 3. However, there is no substitution for running the uh, calculations necessary to make sure that your system is going to perform right the first time. Uh, most newcomers have a problem with this. We can help you. Feel free to call us. Our phone number is 1-800-579-4110. The formula are not very complicated. You do need some general information about your machine before you call us. For instance, what type of bearings do you intend to use? Are you going to use rails with pillow blocks? Um, basically, what type of bearing are you going to use? Also, what type of transmission? It makes a big difference if you have a 5-pitch lead screw than if you have a 10-pitch lead screw. A ball screw generally is better than a lead screw. Rack and pinion, you know, you have to know the gear ratios. The calculations just simply cannot be run unless you know some of those things. The general inputs to the calculations are the types of bearings, the ratings of the bearings if you have cut sheets, the, the weight of the gantry or whatever is going to be moved by that system, 
the type of transmission and the gear ratio of the transmission whether that gear ratio is literally gears belts and pulleys or a lead screw configuration good mechanical engineering is the key to making sure a system will perform well the first time Okay. Before we go on any further, there's only a couple more slides. I want to tell you a little bit about Stepper 3. Uh, Stepper 3 is no longer a single member LLC. We just took a new member. His name is Bill Hightower. Um, I'm the other member, Steve Rudolph. We've been operating since 2002. We've served hundreds of clients. And a little note about the industry. There are many, many vendors of stepper motors. There are many, many vendors of uh, stepper motor drivers, as well as breakout boards and software. Um, it, it's actually becoming a commodity-driven business. Where Stepper 3 has tried to form its niche in the market is that, you know, we're one of the few who will spend time with our people, our clients on the phone, help them pick out the right components for their application um, and that served us well so we like to think that service we are probably one of the better firms out there for service so feel free to call us we will gladly help you select the right equipment for your application um, even if you have general questions feel free to call okay now let's talk about the econo step line of motors the Econostep line of motors are made in China. Their performance specifications are generally lower than most American motor manufacturers such as Applied Motion or uh, even Pacific Scientific. However, the key is in specifications. For example, a NEMA 17 stepper motor, Econostep, generally runs between 17 and say $25. An equivalent stepper motor by an American manufacturer is between 50 and $75. Again as specifications. The motors, the Econostep motors or the Chinese motors perform to their specifications. So you can afford generally to buy a little higher performance Econostep motor when comparing it to the American motors and as long as the specifications are what you require they'll perform well and perhaps save you quite a bit of money so that's just something to be considered I would never steer anyone away from looking at the Econostep motors they're, they're a great motor for the money now we talked earlier about voltage and how using a good current controlled driver will allow you to use higher voltages and ultimately that will result in greater torque at higher speeds. Okay, If you take a look here at the Applied Motion HT23400 motor, you'll see the uh, magenta line is a 24 volt line. Okay, This is the torque speed curve of this motor using a tenth step driver at 24 volts DC. If you refer to the table to the right, the second column shows you the 24 volt performance. Okay, The yellow line is the same motor on a tenth step driver with a 40 volt DC power supply. You'll notice at 5 revolutions per second, you get 142.5 ounce inches when using a 24 volt power